Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate, uh, again, how to draw free body diagrams here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine this race car that starts from rest. And um, <clears throat> imagine that our driver here, uh, the Stig, <laughs> we've got some Top Gear fans here. Uh, he gets on it, just stomps on the gas. I mean, just stomps on it and uh, doesn't let up for the entire time of this video here. And what I want to do is start by talking about what a graph of velocity against time might look like. So we're going to break this up into time intervals here, velocity against time. And the time intervals are going to be like, we're just going to talk about like small times, and then kind of intermediate times, and then way down the road. So for small times, you know, maybe the first couple, three seconds, the speed of this car is not going to be very high yet. It's going to be increasing. An important thing to realize is that air drag is going to be a factor here we're going to try to take into account. But air drag is a force that uh, is speed dependent. And as long as the speed on the car is not really high yet, the air drag would be very, very, very small. That means that the acceleration of the car will be approximately linear for a while. I'm, I'm sorry, the acceleration would be approximately constant, which would give us an approximately linear graph for a while. As the car is moving faster and faster and faster, air drag is gonna be becoming more and more and more of a factor. And basically what that's going to do is make the acceleration of this car fall off, get smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, the car is going to hit its maximum value uh, speed-wise, and it isn't going to be increasing in speed anymore. So our velocity against time curve might look something like this. And I'm going to talk about the free body at a couple of spots here, maybe spot one, two, three, and four. Three I had intended still be still be speeding up it ever so slightly. All right, so I'm going to try to make my free bodies um, kind of generic and not, not get too specific. We're going to have surfaces in contact at four tires. I'm going to group these together into one force. Uh, those are That's an example of what we call a normal force. I'm going to go ahead and put a force in for that. Oops. And that force would be up on the car. Now, again, in this example, this is the sum of four different normal forces, one on each tire. The car's got a weight. This goes at what's called the center of gravity, which might be approximately here, mg. The force accelerating the car is a frictional force. Uh, in a rear-wheel drive vehicle, that force would be acting right here, tangent to the curve. And it's in this direction. Now, for low speeds, like in position one here, air drag's not quite a factor yet. So we may just leave it right off the free body entirely. And then the free body for the car might look something like this. All right. Next, part two. Let's talk about what happens here when we're at location two here. So the speed now is quite a bit higher. Air drag is now becoming a factor. So air drag is a force that's really happening all along the surface of the car. But we're just going to kind of lump all the small effects into one force, which I'm going to go ahead and put to the left on the car, and I'll call that F sub A for the air drag. Again, important thing to realize, this guy right here is speed dependent. When the car is moving faster and faster and faster, air drag becomes more and more of a factor. If we look at position three, which I had intended here to be, the car is still increasing in speed, but not very quickly. That's because air drag would now be pretty close to the frictional force. Maybe not quite as high, but basically 
almost equal in magnitude to that frictional force, maybe just slightly less. So that's what the free body might look like right, be, right, right while the car is still gaining speed, you know, 180, 181, 182 mile per hour and so forth. And then eventually this car is going to hit a steady state value where the speed is, it's just not able to gain any more speed. You know, that might be 191 miles an hour or something like that. And then still 191, still 191, still 191. At that point, the frictional force and this air drag force would be equal. So I'm just going to slightly modify my free body so that the length of this vector is equal to the length of this vector. So again, the intention of this video was just a little bit about how to draw free body diagrams. In the case of this accelerating car, we've got the gravitational force, which is a field force. After that, when you're drawing free bodies, you're looking for direct physical contacts. So we get contacts at the tires, four of them in theory here, which this force is representing all four of those. This frictional force here is due to the contact at the tire. And also air drag is a contact force because it's, it's basically friction between the air and the car's surface. So I say basically, there's a little more to it than that. So anyway, I hope this video helps um, illustrate how to draw free bodies of accelerating objects. Have a great day.